Now UFC 264 is in the books. It was a crazy event. Dustin Poirier was going against Conor McGregor for the finisher of their trilogy fight. The series is tied at one and one. Now who would have expected that it would end the way it did with Conor getting his leg broke, but up until that point, Dustin was pretty much handling business. Now, what I want to talk about is something we may know it as trash talk, but in the sport performance world, it's called sledging. Now, sledging is basically giving taunts, provocative language, different jabs at the opponent in a verbal way to get under their skin, make them mad, anxious, even nervous to gain some kind of competitive advantage. Now, Conor McGregor is known for this type of behavior. He wants to get under your skin. He wants to build up the fight and use psychological warfare. But the question is, is this always advantageous? Now, if you think about it from common sense point of view, if you're taunting, getting in the opponent's head, they're going to be filling up their thoughts with worrying about what you're saying versus the task at hand. And this often happens when the person gets unfocused and starts worrying about, oh, you suck. I'm going to destroy you. Then, hey, it's going to do something to you. And even in this case for USC 264, Connor went a little too far and started bringing in people's families and even kids and things of that nature, which is uncalled for. But that's not where I want to go to. I want to see is this really doing a bad thing to Dustin. Now, there was a study done with Madden 2008. And what they saw was they gave two conditions, talking trash to the opponent or silent, saying nothing to the opponent. They had three conditions. The first condition, they would play a game. The group that could talk trash would be loud and say what they needed to say, while the other group would stay silent. Now, what they wanted to see is, would self-efficacy go up? Now, self-efficacy is basically a form of confidence, but this form of confidence is the confidence in someone's ability. So, for example, if I'm just confident in the sense of, I know I'm great, that's very general. But self-efficacy is, am I good at jabs, kicks, takedowns in the fight sense? So, self-efficacy was seen to go down in the Madden tournaments when they were not able to talk trash. Now, if you look how this parallels with the trilogy, the first fight, Connor did a lot of talking, so did Dustin, went back and forth. Now, from Connor's perspective, he won that fight, he might have got under Dustin's skin, and he doesn't even admit that he was heartbroken by that loss, and that's kind of what led him on the path to build up on the run he's been going on for the last seven years. Now, if you look at the trilogy, the relevance to that, the second fight, Connor was pretty, I'll say nice for lack of a better word. Now, in the study with the Madden tournament, they saw the people that were silent, they actually had a lower report of self-efficacy or confidence in their abilities, and they performed worse. Now, while he wasn't silent in UFC 257, he did a lot less trash talk. And like I said, it was a friendlier type of rivalry. They even were caught uh, giving each other their whiskey and respective hot sauce. Now, if you look at the studies, how it carries over, Connor lost that fight. Obviously, Dustin's a better fighter. He did what he had to do, but his demeanor, his affect, his self-efficacy was down. He didn't perform as good as he could have. Now, if you look at the third fight, what did he do again? He went back to the ruthless trash talking. Like I said, it went too far, but his plan was to get inside Dustin's head. And like I said, the logic would be, hey, let me talk trash, get in their head. So they're using their mental load, their working memory capacity, something used to rationalize, make decisions. If they're filled with thoughts of, hey, he's calling me this, he's calling me that, it's going to be less attention given to process information when it's needed to. Now, that's probably most people's goal when they're trying to get in someone's head when they're trash talking or sledging. But in this case, he went back to his old methods. Now, going back to that study, that Madden study. So what they saw was they actually didn't do a third round of the tournament, but they told them that they could trash talk once again. And their, once again, their self-efficacy was reported higher, meaning they felt more confident in what they were doing. Now, if you parallel the three fights, looking at that same study, trash talk heavy, Connor won, trash talk down, Connor lost, trash talk went up again because you can see he didn't feel like himself. Even the fans were like, oh, he's not himself. Now, granted, this is just one part of the fight game. You still have to be a better fighter. And like I said, I have a biased opinion. Obviously, since you guys know I work with Dustin, I felt he was winning that fight by far. If it went on, I was confident his conditioning would have carried it on and he would do what he had to do and finish that fight. But it didn't go that way. Connor ended up breaking his leg. But if you see the parallel of the mental cues that get psyched up for a performance, trash talk is not necessarily always a good thing. There's also been other studies that shown that when the person receiving the trash talk, depending on how they dictate it, they actually perform better. That words of, of discouragement can actually make them arise to the occasion. This can go into the type of personality. Someone who's maybe high on eroticism, which is anxiety and worry and pressure, probably would go down in performance when they're given trash talk. 
But me personally knowing Dustin, this is not how he is. He's confident, he has high self-efficacy, doesn't mean you're overly confident in the fact that you can just do anything, but you know you're capable given your training, given your skill set. Now, if you give a person like that, they're probably not going to take it as a negative, but they're going to think of it as an uplift because they already know what they're capable of. Because someone who's low in neuroticism or worry, anxiety, pressure, they're not going to see it as a threat. It's either going to be a threat or a challenge. In this case, Dustin saw it as a challenge and he got his mind right. So make sure next time you're talking trash to someone, whether it be in a, a video game or a high level MMA fight, that is relative to who you're going against, knowing thy opponent, knowing thy enemy, so you can get your mind right.